So how many guys do you know that would cast up a 10-pointer to shoot an 8-pointer? Yeah. Hunting was kind of <laughs> drifting into the background. <laughs> he stomped down a lot of your food plot. I haven't got the shot. <laughs> Gear, man. <laughs> Man, I started puffing like a train. I... <laughs> <laughs> Lizard hunters. <laughs> Folks, welcome to this week's episode of Huntsman's Creed TV. We've got a special show today. We got Kenny and Dennis in camp, and uh, it was a trip having those guys at camp. It They're is. Funny. Yes, sir. Kenny was our, our vet. He came down last year, hunted with us, um, got close, but didn't close the deal, so we had him come back in September on a velvet hunt. And then we got Dennis from Las Vegas. He ain't got to hunt in 20, 22 years, I think he said. Yep. And. He come to Kentucky and, and he was a trip in camp. Yeah. He was, yeah. He was a one funny guy. When the guys got in camp, we had them shoot their bows that morning yeah. and uh, get ready for the afternoon hunt. They both shot good. Dennis was shooting a crossbow. Um, Kenny's going with the old compound. Yeah. Had them all lined up and ready to roll. Hey, this is Kenny. We're back in Central Kentucky, uh, hunting with the Huntsman's Creek crew. Tony and Bubba invited us to come back down where we didn't kill buck last year. So there's a big eight pointer coming into this bottom. We're gonna try to get him tonight. Wish us luck. Dennis hadn't got to hunt in 22 years, and uh, when he got here, he was excited. He was. And uh, yeah, he was looking forward to it. He had an exciting hunt. So he let's did. Uh, yeah. Let's go check it out. Well, you know, gr growing up, we weren't allowed to hunt much. I mean, a BB gun was that, that was the height of, uh, <laughs> of, of hunting. So my brother and I would run out and, in the desert and we were the lizard hunters. <laughs> you know, that exploring the desert, you know, it was a new uh, environment for us. And I, I come to love the desert. And I kind of fell in love with, with hunting. Uh, I had gotten a bow a while back, uh, a uh, bear recurve, 48 pound bow and uh, strong enough for, uh, well they were supposed to be right on the bottom edge of, of deer hunting but I didn't really get to do in any deer hunting but I got out to do some javelina uh, archery and then I got married and uh, met my wife and we went, uh, I went to college and we moved to uh, Wisconsin, and that's when uh, I got a nice bow and started uh, uh, shooting uh, indoor just for the fun of it, you know, the hunters round, and started uh, deer hunting uh, there in the, in the woods. When I could do that, I, I would go out. I couldn't say I was the avid hunter. It was a hit and miss as to, because I, I would go early in the morning because we you know, had four kids, you know, and Kathy's taking care of them, and I either got to be there in the morning or in the evening, you know, and and so it, it kind of worked out that way. And uh, my wife uh, struggled with some time and was in a wheelchair for about five years and had a diverticulitis and a periodic paralysis that there just wasn't time to hunt, and so I had to cook and take care of the kids and 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 my wife and stuff, and so. Hunting was kind of <laughs> drifting into the background, and uh, and then uh, I had a heart attack. And uh, you might say, short r right in that time, my world kind of went upside down. And for me, I thought any hopes of ever uh, hunting were were gone. 
Huntsman's Cree TV is proudly brought to you by the Huntsman's Foundation, inspiring and enabling disabled veterans and children to get into the great outdoors. Carlson's Choke Tubes, the shooter's choice. Tracks for Vets, helping veterans get back on life's track. Cook's Fatal Attraction Deer Scent, 100% pure, fresh whitetail scents, and ultimate whitetail mineral and flavored attractant. Healthier deer, larger racks. This segment of the Huntsman's Creed TV is brought to you by Sword Sights and Tree Limb Quivers. You know, the first night we went out, it was opening season, and uh, there was a lot of activity. And all of a sudden, these two bucks, a 10 point and an eight point, from way back in the, the bean fields, they were, I think, soybean, come walking toward us, and I thought, oh boy, here they come. Really, the heart attack was the easy part. <laughs> and the original bypass, but boy, a complication set in. And I had a five-way bypass, and uh, that went well at, for, I guess, any five-way bypass. It, it just, you know, the surgery went, went pretty good. And, but uh, in the process of healing, they give you a pillow, and you're supposed to squeeze it and cough. And so in the coughing, my sternum began cracking apart. And uh, after a couple of weeks, they did some x-rays and they just said, you know, we, this is really serious. We're gonna have to go back in, in the, you're gonna have to go back in the surgery and we're gonna in, reinforce your sternum. So where the ribs touched the sternum, they had to wrap wire and cinch them to try to compress the sternum so it could heal. And uh, I got a staph infection. Well, that did damage to the sternum because the, the staph went into the bone causing osteomyelitis, but also it compromised my immune system to the point that I had a fungal infection that invaded my lungs. And so I was on probably two of the strongest antibiotics the body can tolerate. They said the, the staph that's invaded your sternum has created osteomyelitis, which is a very aggressive bone infection that will, uh, they said this is of, a, of the nature, it will spread to your rib cage. And we can take care of your sternum, but you cannot live without a rib cage. So we're gonna, we wanna go in, remove your sternum, and we're gonna remove both pectorals and reconstruct a sternum using muscle. They scheduled the surgery and removed my sternum and my pectoral majors. And if there was any hope of ever drawing a bow again, it was, it was gone. It was just, that was not going to be possible. I'm not going to lay down and die. I'm not going to quit. That's not the kind of person I am. And, and even in all of this, I, I felt that God had a reason and a purpose. I fell in love with the eight point. It was so full. It just had a beautiful symmetry about it. I thought, oh man, you know, I think two more points for the beauty of this symmetry. So how many guys do you know that would pass up a 10 pointer to shoot an eight pointer? Yeah, and the 10 pointer's got a kicker off his left G2. Well, we can say we know somebody who does. Yeah, Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> Both deers were in velvet. And so the sun was just about setting. So the sun's hitting that velvet and there's just like a glow. Oh, they were gorgeous in the sun. We had some grass though that was just a little too tall to shoot through and it's like going, oh man, there they are. And you boy, your heart's a pumping and I'm gonna go, man, am I gonna fall off the chair, pass out or what, you know? Or, you know, but I just can't shoot them there. I, I don't get, the, I haven't got the shot. While Dennis is sitting there watching these two bucks, Kenny, he's off and on another farm having a good hunt himself. Last night we got in about around 3.30. Uh, we had some does come out and uh, a little spike. 2008, I was deployed to Afghanistan doing route clearance. Uh, June 26, 2008, my truck uh, was hit by a 110 pound IED. During the IED, I injured my shoulder. 2016, I had surgery to uh, fix the injuries that I had, and during the surgery, the nerves ripped from my spine. Um, now I have no feeling in my left arm or my hand. 
2016 uh, with uh, my nerve injuries in my arm, I shot with the mouth tab with the compound and I just used a piece of paracord and tied it around the D loop and bit down. And uh, I, I have some neck injuries and after about a year of doing that, they, they just worsened my ne neck injuries so I had to find a different way. And a company called Acubo sent me a uh, training device and they helped build my stabilization muscles up in my arm and I was finally able to shoot a compound bow regularly. At around 6.15 or so, they, uh, there was something came in the blind behind us and uh, they spooked out. So we thought the hunt was, we thought the hunt was gonna be over. Somebody's closer. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. If you look over top of the target there, you see where Tony put that pink lumen knock through the building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this segment brought to you by Cook's Fatal Attraction Deer Scent. 100% pure, fresh, white-tailed deer scents. If you know a veteran, or anybody that's disabled, and uh, do you have a chance to get them into the outdoors, doing something, get them to do a hobby. It's the best medicine there is. There's no kind of over-the-counter medicine or prescribed medicine or anything that can compare it to the outdoors. Archery for me is my, I mean, it's, it's changed my life big time. I've got two kids at home and they've, they both picked up archery. Uh, my wife just picked up archery. We turn it into a family thing, and uh, you can't ask for anything better. I mean, it's, it's, it's totally changed my life. We didn't want to give him much time to sit there and get spooked out again, so we, uh, I took the best shot I could and he dropped in about 75 yards. Oh man. I hey, started to shake. Hey, you heard him. <laughs> you heard him. Good shot, man. I, had, I got down like his right here and I, I was like his right here and I knew I was going to hit just a little bit high. It's a freaking beast. <laughs> it's a big deer, man. You want to give him about 15 to 20 more minutes, or you think he's down in the field now? Yeah, he's down in the field. Yeah, he's down in the field. Yeah, he was squaring up blood both sides. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right, well, I hit him just a little bit high. We looked back at the footage, and there was blood squirting out both sides. So, I mean, he was pumping pretty good. All right, good deal. All right, it's opening day, Kentucky uh, deer season, and. Uh, I just shot the biggest deer of my life. We still, it's still daylight out. <laughs> we, well, we get to go track him in daylight, so we uh, made a decent shot on him. Waiting on Bubba and Tony to get down here now to help us, but we, uh, we're gonna go look for him. Me and Bubba were sitting in camp. Dennis was watching Bucks, and we got the text from Kenny. Yeah. That he, he laid the smack down the on Big one. velvet deer down. I said, I'm not giving him no time to get out here like them other ones. As soon as he gets in and shoot range, he's gone. He come, he come in at the very edge of that field. When he I pulled the car today, the look, yesterday evening, he come from that away. Did he? Yeah. The wind, man, just he's playing the wind. Mm -hmm. Man, he's big body deer. Really? God. Yeah, he's, his wrist is hanging down lower than his freaking elbows are. <laughs> I mean, it's it's double on. Yeah. It's double on, man. He's, he's, he's scoring out both sides. Yeah, he's, he's done. He's hurting. Let's go look for him. 
He's he stomped down a lot of your food plot here. I've been all over his freaking place, man. I don't think you gotta keep looking real far. <laughs> Thank you. You won. You first felt the deer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> I told you it's almost as big as a coke can. Yeah. I'll tell you what, there ain't, uh, there ain't no ground shrinkage on that guy, is there? <laughs> I just want to thank the Huntsman's Foundation, Huntsman's Creed, for having me and Nick to come down here and hunt. You can't ask for a better bunch of guys. It's, it's amazing the atmosphere that we're in down here with these guys, and uh, it makes us feel like we're home down here. I just want to say thanks to everybody. Thank you all. Huntsman's Free TV is proudly brought to you by the Huntsman's Foundation, inspiring and enabling disabled Americans to get into the great outdoors. Carlson's Choke Tubes, the shooter's choice. Tracks for Vets, helping veterans get back on life's track. Cook's Fatal Attraction Deer Scent, 100% pure, fresh whitetail scents and ultimate whitetail mineral and flavored attractant. Healthier deer, larger racks. This segment of Huntsman's Cree TV is brought to you by ultimate whitetail mineral and attractants. Healthier deer, larger racks. Well, you know, Dennis, he had an awesome hunt opening evening. Yep. He had both shooters there in, the, in front of him. Yep. But unfortunately, the way I'd set the blind up, there was some grass out in front of him and he just didn't feel comfortable with the shot. We get up the next morning, me and him go to church and he's getting ready to head back out to the blind. So him and Z goes and gets in the blind and I cut the grass down and it's game on from there. When I saw him coming down, and he he started getting closer and closer, and uh, <laughs> I remember Z said, "Now, now let him settle in. Don't grab the bow. Don't move." When he got down out of sight, and then I knew he was coming up, and he was going to be broadside. I grabbed that bow. <laughs> there probably wasn't anything that could keep me from grabbing that bow. And so he come up, sure enough, and he came around broadside, and <laughs> he said I was puffing like a train. He goes, no, breathe slow, breathe slow, breathe slow. <laughs> you know? So I'm going, I'm trying, I'm trying, you know? And so I'm just hang, watching him, you know, and all of a sudden he gets broadside, he puts his head down, and then well, I was going, okay, this is it. He took off and I just about <laughs> Oh, I was so I was so excited it was uh, a real rush. <laughs> we knew Dennis's shot was low, so we let the deer lay for a few hours. Yeah. And then we went back later and picked him up. Yeah. Yeah, his shot was just a little low, but it done the job. This is just a gorgeous animal. I couldn't uh, this is a dream. This is just a dream come true. I've you know the days, well, you hunt as as a as a younger hunter, you always dream of that that trophy animal. 
and he's coming down the hill the same way he did before and he came up and he did almost disappeared and came across broadside and then oh man, man I started puffing like a train and I, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. hyperventilating oh, yeah oh, I said, whoa, oh, I said, whoa, oh now what you know and so I finally I got myself in position sure enough he just stepped and got to a point you know and was pretty close to broadside and I just squeezed her off. Boy, and then it was like, I can could see that puppy hit. I'm going, oh, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> From all of us here at Huntsman's Creed TV, we'd like to congratulate Kenny and Dennis on two beautiful velvet Kentucky whitetails. You know, folks, all this was made possible through the Huntsman's Foundation. If you go online, go to our website, you can watch old hunts, you can also donate on there. And if you're a disabled vet, a vet, a kid, fill out the application to come and hunt with us, or if you know anybody that would like to come and hunt with us, go on there and fill it out. Well, folks, thanks for watching. Next week, we got another awesome episode. We got Rick and Sean, two vets that came in turkey hunting with us. They're here on a spring Kentucky turkey hunt. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see you next week. Closed captioning provided by the Huntsman's Foundation. Turning your donations into adventures for disabled Americans, one at a time. All right, this is useless, our cat. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. Three, or, three or four days, we got close on a couple. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Seriously, come on, smooth it out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>